Hi, this is AP Calculus AB Lesson 4.4. It's going to be graph analysis of f, f prime, and f double prime, where we're going to make conclusions about the other two given only one of the graphs. Now, the first graph, this one's going to be the easiest one. It's straightforward. This is going to be the pre-calculus one because we're going to analyze the original graph of f. So given below is a graph of the function f, state all the conclusions that you can state about the graphs of f prime and f double prime, and then we're going to justify each conclusion. Okay, so on the left here we have all the first derivative, and on the right we have the second derivative conclusions. So where is the first derivative positive? Well, the first derivative will be positive when f is increasing, which also means a positive slope. So we're going to look at this graph, and starting on the left, this is increasing till we get to negative 4, then it goes decreasing, then increasing again, and then decreasing. So we see that the first derivative will be positive on the interval from negative infinity to negative 4, also on the interval from negative 2 to positive 1. That's a union, that just means we're uniting both intervals. Okay, and where is the derivative negative? That's when f is decreasing, which also means a negative slope. And we see the graph f is decreasing from negative 4 to negative 2, and from 6 to positive infinity. Okay, um, where is the first derivative equal to zero? First derivative is equal to zero. Remember, first derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So here the slope was positive, and here it's flat. It's a zero slope also here and also here. So f prime of zero, f prime of x is zero when x is equal to negative four negative 2 and 1 because f has a horizontal tangent line at those spots. All right, where does, I'm going to have to keep zooming out to fit this page, where does the derivative change from positive to negative? So if the derivative is going from positive to negative, that's happening here at negative 4, and it's also happening at positive 1 because we're going, because f has a relative maximum. So this should all be a review. Where does the derivative change from negative to positive? So here the derivative is negative and then it goes positive because the slope is going down to up, decreasing to increasing. And so that's at negative two, x equals negative two. And the reason is f has a relative minimum. Okay. What can we conclude about the derivative? So if the original function, what type of function is this? It's negative, but it's a, what power is it? It's a 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's called a quartic, but f of x is a negative x to the fourth power function, which means the derivative would be a negative cubic function, right? With some uh, letters in front that are, are, that are unknown. All right, let's talk about the second derivative and the conclusion. So what's the definition of the second derivative is positive? That's when f is concave up like a cup. And let's see here, we have concave down to here, and then concave up, and then concave down. And we're gonna try and make these fit into whole numbers. So what do you guys think? Can we make this negative one? 
or yeah I think it starts going concave down there so um, concave up from negative 3 to negative 1 and where is it concave down concave down from negative infinity to negative 3 and then from negative 1 to positive infinity f is concave down all right, where does the second derivative equal zero? That's where it changes concavity, so that's called a point of inflection. Inflection. And it changes concavity at the points x equals one, sorry, x equals negative three and x equals negative one. Okay, if f is a negative x to the four function, what would the second derivative be? So the first derivative is a cubic, and so the second derivative, what's the derivative of a cubic? It would be a negative um, quadratic, all right? All right, six minutes in, and I still have two more examples, so, and these are gonna be uh, a little bit harder. Are you ready? Here we go, why is this different? Um, this is a graph now of what? The derivative. So we're gonna answer questions about the original function and then about the second derivative, okay? Are you ready? Here we go. F is increasing. Well, what's the definition if F is increasing? If F is increasing, the first derivative is positive, which means our graph, because this is a graph of the first derivative now, above the x-axis, okay? So where is this graph above the x-axis? From negative two to one, and then from three to infinity. So that's where the derivative is positive, which means the original function is increasing on those intervals. Where would the original function be decreasing? That's when the derivative is negative, which we have a picture of the derivative. So a negative derivative means below the x-axis in this example, and that would be from negative infinity to negative two, oh, make it an infinity, to negative two, and then it's also below the x-axis from one to three. Okay, where does f have a relative maximum? So think about maximum means f, the derivative, must change from positive to negative. Okay. This is a graph of the derivative. So negative, 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 positive, 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 negative. So right here, it changes from positive to negative. So where the derivative changes from positive to negative, f has a relative maximum, and that's gonna be at x equals one. Where would the original function have a minimum when the derivative changes from negative to positive, so let's look on the graph. Negative, 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 positive, so that's at x equals negative two, and does it happen again? Positive, 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 negative, negative, negative to positive here, so three, also at three, okay? So the original function would have a max here, a min here, and a min here. Okay, now we're gonna do something for the first time. We haven't done it yet, okay? We're gonna talk about, you guys, this says the second derivative. It looks, looks a little funny, but the second derivative given the graph of the first derivative, okay? So, um, oh, when will the second derivative equal zero? Second derivative equals zero. So the derivative of the derivative, but this is a derivative, right? So the second derivative, the derivative of this, is talking about tangent lines, right? Tangent lines. So where is, let's see here, do I have different colors? Eh, I don't know, I'm wasting time. It's gonna make me upset later. Okay, so let's talk about the slope of this, ready? So when this is increasing, this is the derivative, right? The second derivative, is going to be positive, right? And when this is decreasing in orange, the second derivative will be negative. And what about here and here? 
the derivative of the derivative, the second derivative will equal zero. Okay, I'm going to write these um, things down. Ready? Where's second derivative zero? That's at negative one, x equals negative one, and x equals two, because the derivative f prime has a horizontal tan line. So now where is the second derivative greater than zero? That's when the first derivative is increasing. So the first derivative is increasing from negative infinity to negative one, and then also from union with two to infinity. Just ran out of room there. And f prime is decreasing from negative 1 to 2. That's all the numbers between negative 1 and 2. Interesting? Cool, huh? All right, I got four minutes to do this. Example 3, analysts, I'm going to actually pause it. Can you guys pause and copy down, um, copy down some things? Okay, we're going to pause it and then explain. Okay, if you can pause it now and then copy in these definitions, and you should know these definitions, so they're not new, um, but then we can explain. So pause, pause and copy. Don't keep watching, pause. Did you pause? Okay, we're back. Okay, this is a graph of the second derivative now. What we know is that when the second derivative is positive, then we know f is concave up, right? So if we want to know where f is concave up, and we're given the graph of the second derivative, we need to see on the graph where it's above the x-axis. So do you guys see where it's above the x-axis? Now we can't say from zero to infinity because at three, you guys, is it above the x-axis or is it on the x-axis? Okay, it's on the x-axis. So we have to say from zero to three and then from three to infinity. So we skipped over that three. We didn't include it. Okay, where is f concave down? f is concave down when the second derivative is negative, and that's going to be below the x-axis because that's what the graph we were given of. Given, given of, whatever. Okay, second derivative. Um, so where does f have a point of inflection? So f will have a point of inflection anytime the second derivative changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So this is our second derivative. Where does it change from negative to positive? Right here. Now, does it change here? No, it stays positive, positive. So it only changes at x equals zero. Okay, think backwards now. If our second derivative is a positive cubic, because we went up, down, up, one, two, three, then what would the first function be? What would the the first derivative would be a positive x. We got to go backwards, right? So that's going to be a positive x to the four, which means the original function is a positive x to the five. All right. Okay. Given the graph of the second derivative, what conclusions can we make about the first derivative? Well, the first derivative will be increasing when the second derivative is positive. So f is increasing whenever it's above the x-axis, but isn't that the same definition we put over here? So f is concave up when the derivative is increasing. The second derivative is positive. f is concave down when the first derivative is decreasing because that makes the second derivative negative. And where would f prime have a minimum when the second derivative changes from negative to positive, which happens here at zero? Interesting, right? So the derivative will have a minimum when the original function has a point of inflection. Okay, this should hurt your head just a little bit because it's like all the same words mixed together. But now you're going to... Um, you're going to try the practice, and I wonder if you got the answers to this. Answers will be posted, so even though it's multiple choice, you have to give a reason, and and then the back, you're going to do the back. Cool, awesome, right? Good job.